Right on, my brother Robert Miller. Professor Crane, good to be here again. <laughs> going to be hanging out and, uh, well, working, putting the, the you're going to be filming the Barbell 101 yeah. uh, this weekend. Yep, yeah, I'm just coming up, uh, I think we're doing that Saturday, right? Saturday. So that'll be fun. A little bit of uh, strength training to add into the uh, tactics. Bar- some system. barbell training, right? So yep. stuff that we've been... Well, I'm the guinea pig, right? You've Pretty much. Putting a, been uh, deadlifting, squatting, and just you know, strength training, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, nice. It's a perfect, perfect thing. I twice a week, I feel great. Good. You know, I do all the mobility and the club bell and just all the other training that we do. You know. Right. Right. And yeah. I've been getting strong. I've been feeling better, loading up my spine, and yeah, you know, yeah, your the, your your weights have been going up tremendously, man. It's, yeah. Uh, it's good to see. Like it's amazing how much stronger you can get with just two days a week. Right. As long as you maintain your mobility and release right. all your restrictions. Because that was my main that thing, your- right? I didn't want to. I wanted to get stronger, but I don't want to lose my mobility. Right. Mm-hmm. That, that's just the get go. Right. That's I'm like that's the key to our sport. Yeah, right. Exactly. So you know, when I was when I was lifting weights for a while at that you know that good trainer, I was getting stronger, but then I you know I couldn't go to the bathroom. You know I couldn't. You know, <laughs> that's why my ass, you know, guys are so tight, right? Right. Yeah. And that's not the goal. Like for, it's, well, we do jujitsu, but for anybody else too, I think just to live better. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. good to be strong, but also be mobile at the same Got time. To. I mean, you, you see how those guys are paying the price now without having that knowledge, you know, all the older bodybuilders, Ronnie Coleman and all those other guys, um, <clears throat> realizing that, Hey, wow, this is, this is not good for my body. You know, I'm only 50 and like the guy can't move. He can't walk. He can't get around. You got yeah. 30 years of doing that. It's, yeah. it's no fun to be there. Same, same movement, you know, same movement. Same movements. Yeah. Not pulling yourself in the other direction. Yeah. Got me to watch uh, West Side Barbell. Yeah. Is it, what, what was it called? The yeah. movie? Yeah. West Side. Is that what it's called? West, West Side. West Side versus, versus the world. The world. Yeah. That's it. That's Good old it. Lou Simmons. On Netflix. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's an animal, dude. This guy's not right in the head. Broke but his it, back twice. Right. right? <laughs> nuts man to come back to and that. they started sharing his like little tricks you know with the world because larry bird hurt his back right he's like i gotta help larry bird out yeah yeah the uh reverse hyper <laughs> yeah he created that and that's what uh that's what saved larry bird's career according to, to lou yeah. yeah yeah it's it's good stuff man uh the barbell 101 is uh is nice uh you know i do strength training myself twice a week but right. you know i make sure i maintain my mode my mobility uh, I do all the stuff we do in the tax fit system. Right. Like Scott's taught us, you know, even while we're lifting, we're right. still doing compensation right. after our lift. So it doesn't just right. settle into right. the, into the muscle in there. So keep the thing that, that seems like the, the way to do it. Right. And yeah. Scott, you know, like mm-hmm. we use the hex bar, we use, uh, we use the barbell too. Right. But I mean, for the, for the deadlifts, you know, after a while, but we cycle it in. Yeah. Really get those seven key components. Right. Really get the. Yep. structure get the breath you know really get the technique down before get your we, mind right yeah get your mind right yep. yeah that's one of the things i love about like lifting heavy is just, your head's got to be straight it's got to be in it yeah you can't be thinking about dinner or what else is going on in the world all you could do is be under that barbell and you know pray that you're all all together at the time for it to be successful we started doing the box <laughs> squats you know i was i was kind of blown away just like how f- much stronger because it, it's the bottom of the squat right that mm-hmm. you have a hard time coming coming out of you're kind of worried right oh can i go that low can i come back up right right and then right. we started doing the you know the box squats for I don't, know, I don't know how many months and then we went back went back to the normal squat and man all of a sudden it's just oh, okay you just train that nervous system to this is my bottom yeah it was you crazy know? yeah all you do is put a little box there so your brain knows hey that's gonna be all right if i sit down there's something to stop me great way to train for those uh for those people having a hard time getting into that 90 degree position for the squat yeah yeah so you're gonna be you know attack fade right tactical you can kind of do it wherever right and maybe you don't have a, a squat rack mm-hmm. you don't have uh you know uh, some of the tools right well not the tools you have a barbell mm-hmm. barbell 101 that's but, all you're gonna need is a barbell you don't right. have to worry about the rack or anything along Bench. those lines yeah i just uh made sure that you could do it with just just the barbell and your body weight no matter where you're at um, obviously some weights some added weights, right. to it would be helpful, but you can still just do it with the barbell. If you wanted to start with this, with the strength training and the barbell, it's a great way to start. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to just have that in the, in the mix, you know, yeah. for everybody. And, you know, I, I think the one-on-ones is just like, right. Like a couple of weeks, it's not too many techniques. It's not to overwhelm people. Right. But to kind of integrate all those things. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, so it's mm-hmm. another thing that you can integrate with your training. Like, like, you know, like we said before, 
I train twice a week, right? I twice right. twice a week. I do the barbell. I load up my back. I do my squats. I do do my my deadlifts. You know, I do the compensation in between those things. Yep. As well as the the bench and yeah. Yep. Which is what we're gonna have on the end of that. So we're gonna have the barbell exercises, but then we're gonna do the compensatory movements as well right behind it. So we're not getting locked into position. Right. So it's gonna be a strength training, but also keeping with the mobility. Yeah. So that you could stay fresh, stay young stay youthful in movement that's um it. so that way you know you can get stronger without getting injured yeah like for me right my my neck and my my shoulders like the bench press bench pressing heavy mm -hmm. i thought i would never bench press again but uh just it's important for me especially grappling and stuff my, my neck and my my shoulders just get so tight you know right well you never thought you'd be doing push-ups on your hands again right right you know right. like What'd you do? Like over a decade of push-ups on the knuckles. So I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, it all competing, it, fighting with you know, posting like a gorilla on the on the mats, right? Sure, yeah. As long as you, uh, as long as you put the work in, your body can yeah. do the right things, right? Do the right the things. Flow the system, tack fit, you know. Yep. You know, and <laughs> the hardest thing that I didn't want to do was the flows, right? Mm -hmm. And that was the most hard thing to do. But that's what gave me the most results. Of course, it was like baby steps, right? You start with right. the into flow, the open chain, then maybe close chain into flow and then transition to, you know, bought some body weight movements and it's all integrated. Right. So it's just like step by step, right. You pro regress and then progress yep. to where you're at. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, the flow, um, is probably the worst thing for a lot of people because you're just using your own body weight, you know, and controlling your own body weight and controlling your own movement is probably the hardest thing, especially if you're uh, like a, a bodybuilder or a crossfitter or something along those lines. Uh, you just don't want to move and everything's locked into doing unilateral positions. And when you start to try to twist your nervous system, just starts to freak out and you know, you start sweating and you're like, I'm not even moving. How am I, what am I, what's going on here? It's yeah. just nuts. So yeah, it's probably the most important thing I would say for, for anybody to stay youthful is, is to do those into flows and just to do those flows. Cause yeah. Body flow, know. body flow, six degree flow, flow yeah. fits. Yeah. You know, and, and then, I just have the memory of you bench pressing, right? And, uh, well, you had the motorcycle accident. Yeah, you? four years ago now. Four years ago. Yeah. And uh, you couldn't, you didn't work with the barbell really for, if all you did was the club bell. I couldn't. I couldn't put weight in my hand. I couldn't let the gravity push down into my palm because it was all swollen still. So it was just all, it was all club bell work. And I thought, you know, I was like, oh, my bench is going to get weak again. I'm going to drop down. And I was like, after... I think it was like three years after I was mm -hmm. finally able to put weight in my palm and I just went back and the strength was still there. Still there. Everything still was there. there. Yeah. Connected was, tissues were strong and boom, you're able yeah, to do it. It was, it was, it was actually kind of mind blowing to me. And I was like, wow, that's uh, there really is something to this, you know, as much as uh, you can deny working with it, deny working with the structures and, you know, and just say, oh, it's this, it's that, it's pseudoscience or whatever. Right. That's fine. Until you experience it. Right. Until you experience you'll it. You'll be a denier. But. You know, I see how far you've come. I've seen what it's it's done for me with yeah. my injuries, and I've seen it how it helps everybody else in jujitsu yeah. as well. Um, it's awesome. It's a and great the students great training system. in the Taifa yeah. classes, right? Yeah. The last four years. Yep. Yeah, like my for my trainer, my this Italian trainer. Uh, uh, he was like a, you know, I think he was on the weightlifting team, the Italian weightlifting team. He was a bodybuilder with uh, like you know with Ronnie major major time with mm -hmm. Ronnie Coleman and those guys, you know. Um, and he was. I, you know, I post the videos, the the club bell videos, and he makes fun of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Because they don't, you don't understand. Yeah, I and, was the same way. Right. At first, of course, right. I didn't understand. I didn't know. You say, oh, 45 pounds. What am I gonna do with that? You know, but it, it'll change. It'll change you. It. It'll change your body. It gets you stronger internally. It connects you back into your movement, so your brain is more focused right. on it. And when your brain is on a task, there's nothing you can't do. You know, and that's where a lot of people fall off is that they don't use the, all the power of their brain. Right. Uh, and they just try to muscle everything through. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I can't tell you how much this place looks. It's unbelievable, <laughs> man. From our, yeah, from the first podcast. What was that, about a year ago? Two years yeah, ago, Yeah, about a year ago, about yeah. About a year ago? Yeah. Yeah, I just got Draculino staring at me. I just want to, like, <laughs> fix my posture and, you know, be all, all polite and No stuff. bad words. <laughs> yeah, no bad words. It's like he's just staring at me. I'm like, wow, when did Draculino get here? Uh, yeah. But it's it cool, you know. Great. Yeah, go back to the club bell and the, the barbell, like, you know, it's it's really cool from a, somebody that, you know, his whole life has been moving the barbell, right? Mm -hmm. And to see you 
believe in the club bell and then just integrating it all right together. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's kind of, it's cool that you came out with the club bell 101. You were the guy and, and the barbell. And that's just, it's just really cool to see all these things come together. Yeah. It's, it's been a crazy ride, man. Like, you know, just everything we're doing from, from where the world is now to right. our, we're doing that online certification, you know, and it's, we got a workshop coming up this weekend and, uh, man, when you, you log on and you see like over a hundred people from all over the world learning this system, yeah. wanting to understand and the whys and the science behind it, it's, um, it's humbling. You're like, wow, we're really, could really do a lot of good stuff for mankind to, to help people with diseases, to help people with, you know, chronic pain and, you know, and it's, it's all like, uh, you just got to show up and do the work. You know, and just That's give it. your best, you know, don't give my best. Don't give Professor Crane's best. Give your best. And every day you get a little bit better than what you were the day before. But, you know, you just got to show up. Yeah. You, know, you just got to show up. You have, so you have a few smaller groups, right? Mm -hmm. Is it three? Two? I got uh, two, two. Two small three, yeah, yeah, workshop two. Yeah, groups. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah. It's great to see the community, you know. Yeah. In that, you know, guys from different countries, right? Yep. Different parts of the world. All over the United States, all over the world. Yeah. And what's really fun for me is that like so they're showing all their videos and we're watching their techniques throughout the weeks and the last couple of months and you're seeing you can literally see them progress mm. and get better and understand more as they move through it and realize, wow, I can do more. I can I could sustain this yeah. if I just listen and, and follow yeah. my breathing. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of good people that are just putting in a lot of work and it's all age ranges too. It's not yeah. like just young people, you know, it's, it's, it's all over the map. Yeah. So yeah, it's really it's cool good stuff. Yeah. It's something, I mean, jujitsu, right. It's hard to do virtually. Yeah. <laughs> very difficult to do jujitsu virtually. This, like tack it's amazing because you can improve your quality of movement, improve your, you know, your improve yourself. Mm hmm virtually and it totally works totally it totally works of course yeah. it's better in person but right well, it's totally better in person. yeah but this we're, it's more thorough more time you know but right. it's all about showing up right and putting in the reps and we're able to correct and mm -hmm. and teach through yeah. through virtually yeah even though we want to do it in person but right. it's, we're still able to do it yeah it's uh it's been incredible yeah we're coming down to the end now i think we're gonna have uh what two weeks left and then we gotta have right. some people coming into testing so right but the you know we have guys you know are some of our jujitsu students here right that doing it as well mm -hmm. and it's cool they're they're on they're online doing it online mm -hmm. uh, and they're improving and yeah. because they're improving they're improving their jujitsu even right because yeah. of their yeah their, there's their practice um, I was rolling with uh, one of the girls you know and she's smaller in size you know good strong purple belt and. Uh, she pulled the tack fit, moved on her, and I yelled at her. I said, don't ever do that again while we're rolling. That's uh, it's not very nice. I went to, you know, roll her over, and uh, she just went right into a bridge and then turned right on top of me. And next thing you know, she was on top, and I was like, don't don't use my magic against me. Like, That's, <laughs> That's not what I said. I tell the guys, don't be using the moves that I show you against me. <laughs> you can't do that to us, man. Come on. It's amazing though, right? It's amazing to it see really that, is. you know, for them to learn, improve. Mm -hmm. I mean, man, during the pandemic, we're, you know, we were able to continue the tack fit classes, right? Because right. And we did, that's what I taught instead of jujitsu because, mm -hmm. and it worked really well. Guys got in really good shape. Guys improved their technique and really opened up, opened up their minds, right? To, to continue on and yeah. do this, right? Yep. I think for me, it wasn't it never even really about the certification, but just improving myself. Yeah. You know, yep. we're, we had a, like a meeting today and we we're talking about it and, and, and yeah, I never thought about like getting certified. Right. But what I want, I wanted to learn and I wanted to improve. I just wanted to improve myself. And the way was like a certification is a great goal to have, you know, it was just like a goal. Sure. To, we to all need towards. our whys. Why am I going to go through all this? Absolutely. And, and then it brings the community together, like you're saying. And so it's, it's, it's great. You know, I feel really connected to people all over the world. Of course I traveled and stuff, you know, right. But it's great to man, to see all these faces from, from around the world, literally. Mm -hmm. Seriously around the world. <laughs> yeah. I mean, our educational directors in uh, Spain in Catalonia. So our certification starts at 6 a.m. our time, 3 p.m. Uh, in Spain's time. And then we have people that are in the Abu Dhabi, Brazil, Colombia, or Argentina, Malaysia, yeah. Malaysia Thailand. Thailand. Yeah, it's, uh, Indonesia. it's literally, I don't, there might not be a spot in the world that we don't Australia, have Australia, New someone, Zealand, Brazil, we don't uh, have someone South America, participating. All the countries, yeah, Chile. I think it's all the countries, yeah, right? Yeah. Panama. Even Panama, yeah, 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 Central America, Costa Central Rica, America. even all over. So yeah. it's uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. It really is. It's and uh, what's 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 amazing too is that you know, 
it's going to be crazier next. It's not crazier. It's going to, it's just going to grow because right. we're doing we're it's working right yep. guys. I see everybody improving. Yep. We're building community. Mm-hmm. You know what this is. This really does. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I'm excited to see like next year, you know, we're going to have a flow fit probably the first, the first quarter. Very nice. Uh, and then uh, probably another tack fit and then probably the club bell. All right. Club yeah, L cert. Uh, club L cert. Nice. Yeah. And then of yeah. course we have uh, E6 Mace certification, which I'm really excited to. And that's the end of the January. End of January. Right? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So we had, a, there was some meetings and. Yeah. Really we got a really good that. crew, man. We got yeah. a good crew out there. We got a lot of guys that are real passionate about it and we really just. It's uh, their life, right? It's their life. Like, I mean, it's yeah, got, it's got a more and more that like, takes you over, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, uh, it's not like anyone's driving with ego. It's like, we all just want to improve everybody and we just want to share the knowledge that Scott has shared with us and, you know, all the other groups you know, like Z health and yeah. pulling from all those other right, right, right. places, you know, it helps grow us. And if we can have a good, healthy society, then, you know, you, you get a rid of a lot of anger and war and, and, and all that kind of negativity stuff that comes along with Fear, life right? from being just the being unhealthy. Yeah. You know? It's hard to have a happy demeanor when you're constantly in pain. You know, it, it sucks. Like you can't live like that. You can't sleep. Everything is affected by it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's really good stuff. It's great. The let's go back to the certification. What's your favorite part of the certification that you've that you've seen that you feel like is man, this is this is amazing. Um, a moment. So being on both sides, um, being you know getting certified myself, um, what I liked about that was it's just that fight within myself, you know. And it's that internal dialogue that you're having with yourself. You know, am I going to be able to do this? You start doubting yourself, you know, and you start to realize that that's affecting your performance. So I enjoy that part about being certified of, you know, having someone watch you, guide you, teach you all this kind of stuff. What I enjoy from the other side of it is how much the people grow, how much they improve Mm -hmm. in not like years past, but like just in a couple of days. You know, when they first walk in and they're first doing their qual test and then we give them these little tips and then you see it almost immediately improve. That to me is like, wow, there's really, this is really something. This just can really help a lot of people no matter what you like to do for a living, no matter what your sport is, even if you play sports or just movement. You know, I was having a conversation the other day with a friend of mine about, about movement, you know, and if the body constantly moves in the same manner day in and day out, the brain doesn't learn anything new. So it takes all of that mobility that you had as a child and just starts throwing those files away, right. you know? And then next thing you know, you just, you don't move at all. You just Those, realize yeah. you, you know, and to me, like the movement is what keeps your brain healthy, keeps your brain young, keeps it learning different things. And that's what it likes to do is just to keep that movement. So if you find yourself that you're constantly just one of those people that are just, you know, I'm standing at my desk, I'm up my day, I'm, I'm not doing anything new. You're going to the gym, you're doing the same bench press, the same squat, the same yeah. movements, incorporate some new things into your routines so that your brain can start to wake up and your body can start to wake up. Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> I mean, between our, our, all the, of course, Scott's, all the movement stuff that we do, the body weight, the club bells, which is infinite, mm-hmm. right? Really, infinite. truly. Like, uh, the, you, you, as long as you're a creative that's all person. You need. Yeah, that's all you, you know, need, right? Do whatever you want. Yep. Uh, of course, all the tools that we use, the kettlebells and parallettes and everything else, gymnastic rings. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, of course, now we have the mace. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm really excited that you've been adding it into our classes. Yeah, it's here. a fun tool. It's definitely a fun tool. It's definitely different and challenging. Um, yeah, and I like it because it, it's given me something else to learn. You know, it's given me another tool to work with, another another device to work with, and and to really feel it out and see how the how people can respond to it. Yeah. Um, what was uh, like when you did your club bell certification, mm-hmm. your original club bell certification? What were, what were some of the good memories that you have of like like aha moments? Um. When I started doing the mills, I didn't, I didn't like the mills at first. I thought they were too rough on my shoulder, but after doing them for a while, it's, it's become one of my favorite moves. It's almost meditative to Meditative, me. yeah. You know, it's almost like just... Once you get it, it's frustrating right at the beginning. Yeah. Like, and then once you got it, you're it's like, like, oh. Like, the only way I could really zen. describe it is, is like getting a runner's high. I don't know if you've ever been a runner or people yeah, that get runner's mm-hmm. high. You understand that. But when you get into that mill and then you find that f- smooth groove and you realize, wow, my breathing's 
normal. My heart rate's normal. And I'm still moving this club bell around me for, you know, 100 reps or 50 reps on each arm. And you realize it's all just connective and I'm just moving in a circle and it's just becomes less exercise and more like just a meditative state of mind of, you know, euphoria. And like, you're just in the moment. Like, and I even just close my eyes nowadays and just feel it moving yeah, around me. It. It's just, uh, it's really one of my favorite things to do is that mill. Yeah. Yeah. The body maps, right? And yeah. This is like, you know, like where you're at, where your hands are in space, but then you add the club bell. And it like increases your body map where you're at in space because it becomes it becomes an extension mm -hmm. of your body. And it does because when I first started doing the club bells, I would have a knot on the back of my neck, not my neck, but right behind my ear. Because every time I came around, I would hit myself with the club bell. Now, I didn't do it on purpose. I didn't do it a lot. You know what I mean? But it was just a learning curve. Mm. You know, I don't I don't do it anymore because now I've learned where that club bell is in space. But, you know, it's just a little bit of a learning curve. So. Yeah, I love doing those mills. I really like the club bells. Um, it's just, it, it really goes well with jujitsu. Like, you know, we've talked about this before. And, you know, when I was training here years ago, how much of a rock I was. Yeah. You know, but now, like, I don't know. It's, 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 it's just crazy to me. Like, I could just move out of stuff so much easier than what I was able to do before. Um, you know, and like I said, if you don't, if you don't experience it, yeah. it's, it's hard to it's like jujitsu, right? When people come and do a, they watch a jujitsu class, but until you do it, mm -hmm. like you don't know. Right. Right. Even like so I was talking to Jihad actually this last week and he was, we were talking about like the flow is like, Oh, it looks easy, mm -hmm. but you don't know until you do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you're like, Oh my uh -huh. God, I, I can't yep. believe I can't move. How am I not being there? Yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, yesterday we did that little cheetah to the forward sit through one of our little moves. Uh, Elena was showing us this a couple of years ago, and it looks so fluid. Like when you watch someone do it, but then you get in there and you're like, "Oh my god, what is going on? Like my legs are burning. I can't breathe. Everything seems so tight." Um, yeah, it's uh, the flows. The flows will surprise you. They'll they'll come out yeah. and, and and challenge you. Tremendously, you know, and some people, again, that, that could be all you need. That could be all you need to do are flows and just connect back into your breathing and movement. I mean, for me, I feel like that's the number one thing just because it was the hardest thing for me to do, but it was what, what I needed the most. Mm -hmm. And then, and, of course, the club bells help too, you know? Right. And that's the problem is that people often do what they want, not what they need, you know, because what you need usually sucks. It's usually what you're not good at is usually what makes you suffer the most. So we usually steer away from that. We go back to what we're comfortable doing and not learning those new moves, you know? So always remember, do what you, what your body needs, not just what you want to do. You know, been teaching now for almost well, more than four years. I shouldn't say almost more than four years, uh, almost every single day attack fits, you know, mm -hmm. and we've seen, I've, you know, we've both seen people transform and people that started four years ago, they're, they're still training today, you know, mm -hmm. um, what are some, some great more memories you have of, of, and it's like fulfilling moments. Um, anytime someone comes to me and says, I don't know, I had one guy come to me and he had pain in his wrist, you know, just, just to touch his wrist. It was, uh, it was painful for him. And he came in to me, he goes, I don't know when it stopped, but I don't, I don't have that pain anymore or people that have lower back issues and they start coming in or people with hip issues. Anytime someone tells me I'm not in pain any longer is probably the most rewarding thing that I can get out of teaching this class because, you know, being injured myself, you know, injuries, I'm sure anyone listening knows about injuries and how much it sucks to constantly have to deal with that pain or constantly trying to figure out a way around that pain, you know, um, whether it's, you know, I have to go upstairs sideways because if I walk straight up, I'm in pain, you know, and like living a life like that is just, it's, it's, it's terrible, you know, or, or not having to do something because you're in pain is not how we are meant to live. So mm -hmm. anytime I have someone that comes to me and says, I have tight hips, tight shoulders, tight this, that, or the other thing, and they come for a couple months and they realize that, Hey, I'm opening back up. My brain is allowing my body to release and not keep the emergency brakes on and stopping myself. That to me is the most rewarding and it's not young people, you know, it's people that are, are matured, you know, in their thirties, forties, fifties, even mid fifties that are, are using the system to feel better and move better. Yeah. 
We have some young guys in there too, huh? Yeah, we got some young guys in there. Uh huh. Not to drop names, but you know, right. there's a couple of young guys yeah. in there, and they're they have injuries too, right? Yeah, and they Absolutely. use it to recover to. Improve, just improve like themselves. Re- yeah, recover, but also just improve the bodies. They have maybe knees or whatever kind of issues, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, they improve themselves, get stronger too, right? Right. Get yeah. Stronger. Yeah. The problem. Stronger is- the right way, right? Stay strong. Get stronger. When I say that, and not lose their mobility. Not lose the mobility. Right. Yep. Um. Yeah. The most common thing are the knees and the back. You know, that's that's society's number one Achilles is that uh, everyone's backs postures. You know, sitting too much, sitting wrong, you know, not walking properly or whatever it may be. Um, they need to improve on that. And until you take the time to do so, it'll never get better, no matter what you're doing. You could be working out every single day, but if you're doing the wrong things, you're just doing the wrong things. Yeah. You know, you got to you gotta take a step back and peel back some layers and find out, how do I improve this? Where, where is my anatomy going wrong and how do I make my structure more sound? You've been training for how many years? Like lifting and oh, um, <laughs> I started training. I first started lifting. I think it was ninety-seven, so twenty-three years. Twenty-three years. Yeah, more than half my life. What are some uh, What are some mistakes that you've made? I mean, we we have all these things now, right? But mm-hmm. what are some mistakes that you feel could have helped you? You know, not have injuries and just lived your life better. Um, taking more time to do some compensatory works, you know, because usually, you know, we all have that lifestyle. Um, you know, we got to work, everybody's got to make money. So, you know, I worked in restaurants a lot, so I was always on my feet. So I would go when there was a downtime, I'd go work out and then I'd come back and I'd work some more. So I'm constantly underneath that stress working in a restaurant you're dealing with people when they're at their worst, when they're, they're drunk, whether they're hungry, you know, that's adding more stress into you. So if I can go back to a 22 year old me, I would show them all of this, you know, stuff like what we do, you know, when you're benching, you have tight traps. So we do those side shoulder bridges yeah. to, to get our minds out of holding into all that. So I, w- I would go back to myself and say, you know, let's, Let's do some of this stuff after we lifted, you know, give yourself shorten your workout, but don't shorten your warm up or your cool down mm-hmm. if you don't have the time, mm-hmm. you know? So I would go back and I'd be like, let's cut the workout to 45 minutes so that I can get at least 10 minutes to get my body out of this fight or flight. It's so easy to fall into that trap though. Right. Because like, you know, Scott, I always, that this it's the same saying you get stronger in the recovery. And it's mm-hmm. like that one line that I'm like, you actually get stronger in the recovery. So like these compensatory, you know, co- compensating the right way after the the lifts and stuff. Yeah, that's that's where you're gonna get stronger. But we think like right. more or of like training hard is the way you're gonna get stronger. Mm-hmm. It's actually turning off the muscles and recovering from those those things that, right? Yeah, it's actually the exact opposite. You know, you're actually getting weaker as you as you rip apart those muscles. You know, it's not until they grow back and heal when they're recovered will they be stronger. Mm-hmm. So that's a, it's a tough concept to understand. Even myself, you know, like sometimes I, you know, I, I have whatever, some other stuff and I have to come in a little bit late, but it's an easy trap to fall into, right? Of not stretching after, not compensating after class mm-hmm. or not doing the warm ups properly, right? Mm-hmm. To kind of warm and move all the liquids and get everything primed, right? Right. It's right. like so easy because it's so many years of thinking like, say old school way, but you know, that way, right. Of right. not thinking that that's not important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would say, um, to anybody out there, take, take up that challenge, you know, go in, do a workout without a warm up, and then do a workout with a warm up and a cool down and just see how you feel and see which way felt better, which way right. would you think is going to get more yeah. success out of you? Yeah. You know? So if anyone's out there and you want to try that, just to see, try to go in there and do a bench without warming up and see how strong you feel, you know? There you go. You got to get, you got to get everything primed and ready to go. You get the, get the motor running, get the in, the engine going. And then, you know, you can take the brake off and hit the gas pedal. But I always go back to jujitsu cause that's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's my life, but like it's, just, it's, a, it takes time, right. To build those habits of training that way of training the right way. Mm-hmm. You know, we've been doing the one-on-ones and we haven't been putting in all the pieces just because it is very complex. You know, we're just trying to give pieces, but the attack fit way is the proper warm up, right? Mm-hmm. Of course, our, our workout and then the cool down. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the, the the four or seven day waves, right? Of, right. of you know, cycling your intensity of your training, mm-hmm. you know, Just, for longevity, right? For life. Right. 
yeah so i'm looking forward to you know having putting these these things out like more and more the way they were there you know scott designed them and and complete more complete is the word right absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. yep yeah it really is a complete system overall um i really do enjoy it the you know you, you put out some um i'm not sure when it's going to come out but i think this month of um, like the true coach, like the, the oh, yeah. programming, you know, I think should have launched out. on the first, no, on the first. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I don't, I'll, maybe. I'll fall, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll <find laughs> out. Us, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, for people that did, you know, got your club, club one one one, Um, and I think Isik is, in, is it, the body yeah, weight, the body know? weight one. Yep. So, uh, people are gonna, so they have a follow up and they can continue training and they have a, like a trainer, right. And mm-hmm. it, it, it's system systemized and. So you have uh, you have techniques and you have you can just follow along with the pro, with the four four day waves. So it's more complete, right? Right. Um, so excited to kind of have like those different options, you know? For yeah, it's a nice benefit. platform. Yeah, True Coach is a um, is a good platform. If anybody isn't familiar with it, check it out. Um, so there's some some club bell stuff, body weight stuff that we just uh, started this month. Right. And then we'll just continue that every month, you know, as long as we can and keep trying to improve yeah. as we go. Should be coming out in the email at least. I'm not sure how they. That people are getting uh, involved in it, you know, or mm-hmm. getting to know about it, you know. Right. But uh, but uh, but uh, yeah, it's awesome. You know, yeah. I'm excited to have that. It's a good platform. It's a good platform, yeah. especially nowadays, because you know, God, who knows how many gyms have gone bankrupt or closed yeah. or are never going to come back again. So, you know, don't take your health for granted. Don't just use this as an excuse. Oh, what am I going to do? You know, there's a lot of platforms out there. There's a lot of people that are still willing to help online. Um, you know, you can sign up personal trainers online, you know, there's a lot of ways you guys can get out there and start active, you yeah. know, the hardest challenge is, is, uh, is your mindset, you the know, mindset. cause you can make an excuse. Your brain will make an excuse and, and lie to you all day long. If something that is, it doesn't want to do, you yeah. know, you could justify watching TV for three hours, but going to the gym for an hour, it seems like a waste of time, you know? So it's all about how you perceive it. Yeah. Man, so many benefits, right? Health, there's all the media, there's so much like fear and so much like just mm-hmm. craziness, you know? Man, and this so is like, this is like the. It's hard to find out the truth anymore, <laughs> you know? So <laughs> you're actually. Depending, depending what you look at or yeah, whatever. On it's listening to you, or you're talking. You, yeah, whatever it is. Uh, but the one thing that you can always get the truth out of is that your exercise will right. always tell right. you the truth, right. you know, where right. you're at. Uh, as far as fitness wise goes, you you always get the truth from that. Yeah, that's it. Yep. You know, you've shared, you've talked about like your mini doc, you know, you talk about, you know, some depression and some things that you've dealt with in your life, you know, mm-hmm. um, how has training, how is that, how, how important is that in your life? Well, anybody that suffers from like depression or, or, or any sort of, uh, um, character flaw, um, exercise one gives you confidence overall. Um, it gives you better energy. Uh, it helps you deal with stress as well. You know, um, once you become committed to that and you've committed yourself to those exercises, you've started to learn discipline. So you get to more structure in your life. Um, for me, it's given me a lot of confidence. You know, I grew up playing basketball my whole life. Um, so, being good at that sport really helped build me as a human being, as a person. But, you know, when I was 14, we moved to Missouri and I didn't have, I didn't know a single person in this new school. I was halfway across the country. Um, It was after basketball season. So I had no way I wasn't a very outgoing individual. I was pretty shy. So me going out to make friends didn't happen. Mr. Public speaker now. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Look at me now. Right. Yeah. It's crazy. Isn't it? How, uh, And a lot of that came from just the sports and the exercise, you know. Um, I remember my my first basketball game at that new high school. uh, Everybody knew who I was the following day. And it wasn't because is because they are all watching me play this sport that I love so much. And, you know, I scored 20 points in the first half and that was just unheard of. We were losing by four points and I had all of our points. So everybody knew who I was the following day. So with that, being good in that sport, it gives you that confidence that people want to be around you. You know, it's just like any athlete. People love being around athletes. They're usually very positive people. But a lot of them, a lot of athletes, they deal with that depression. They deal with that. And there's a reason why they're working out and why they become such good athletes is because they want to battle that depression. They don't want to feel down. And being good at something, improving on something, releasing those endorphins in your brain 
you can't feel bad anymore. You have to feel good. You can't focus on the negativities. You have to just focus on the task at hand and deal with what stress is being delivered to you from that, from that workout. Yeah. That's it, huh? Man, like, uh, the, just, just the era that we're in with, uh, no, nobody's talking about that. Right. Right. To, to work out, to move, you know, all, mm-hmm. all the, and so I was joking. I, I did, I talked to Elliot Marshall, UFC veteran, you know, mm-hmm. and we were talking about how, uh, Skynet's already taken over. Skynet. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, man, who knows? Like, why, why, why are we trying to hurt everybody? You know, why are we trying to mess with their health? You know, that's the one thing I just can't figure out as a human being. Like, why do we always go to war with each other? Like, I don't understand. And it. like getting everybody to turn against each other. And, yeah. You know, like, like fight with each other and then, and then doing stuff that's bad for our health. There's you know? not another earth, man. You guys aren't going anywhere. You know, you're not going to, there's, there's no way you're going to rule the whole rock. Like it's not going to happen. Why can't we all just, you know, agree to disagree. Right. Agree you know, to disagree. let's find some truths and let's just stick to what's true and not worry about how we feel or believe about stuff. But like, just find some truths in life that two people from two different sides of the globe can agree on and say, this is true. And now you all of a sudden you have a common ground. And when you have a common ground with someone, it's very difficult to hate them. Yeah. Even if it's a small little thing that we both believe the sun exists. Like jujitsu does that, right? Mm-hmm. Jujitsu does that. Tackfit does that. It seems mm-hmm. like, you know? Yep. And that's why I feel like Tackfit's like a martial art. Oh, it definitely is a martial you art. feel like it's a martial art? Absolutely. Yeah. I see people that come for the first day and you watch them move a club bell and like something that would seem simple to you or like, I don't understand why they're having a struggle with this, you know, with this technique, but it's a technique that you need to learn in your body. Just like anything, a proper punch, a proper kick, a proper arm bar, a proper choke. There's, yeah. there's certain ways that these techniques are used, you know, and when you start to finally hone that technique, you find I could do more complex moves. I can move heavier weights, you know, I could do all this kind of stuff and it starts to open up all these doors. Man, you're showing me the 360s, you know, we're going over the maze stuff, just, just kind of the new moves and different things. You know, it's been it's been exciting for us, right, to mm-hmm. have Isik show us, like, show us the mm-hmm. the maze and bring the maze to the system, you know? Sure, yeah, yeah. it's good stuff. What's your, what, what was some of your favorite, uh, or your favorite thing on, on the maze? Well, I, li- I really like doing the mills with the maze, too, because it's a different, uh, it's like a, a, like a regular mill. Uh, like, no, a like, two-handed, like a two-handed, like a two-handed mill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've done the single arms with the lighter weights, but I, I did the mills, the two-handed mills with the uh, with the thirty-five pounder, and it's just thirty-five pounder. It's a little bit more timing. You know, you gotta have to wait to feel where that weight is, and how do I come back over it instead of being like all stiff and rigid? It's yeah. a lot of fluidity into it. So I do like enjoying doing those mills and. Um, it's a fun tool, you know, it's a, uh, it's a lot longer of a lever. Um, so you could really start to find out the farther the weight goes away, right. the more you have to get centrally located in yourself, you know, to sustain it. Oh, and Issa came and did that first workshop, you know, like I was kind of blown away just on these simple things like, like switching the, mm-hmm. the mace, you know, mm-hmm. <clears throat> how it, how it activates, you know, different parts of your body. Sure. It's yeah. crazy, you know? Plus if you're holding the weight on one right, end, right, you right, know, right, it's right. all, it's all counterbalancing it and your body and yeah, it's, uh, it's fun. Yeah. I liked, uh, you know, coming from, you know, I body built for like three or four years, you know, and I didn't do anything else besides, you know, some body weight stuff, but mostly all barbell stuff. So learning the rings and parallettes and the mace and the club bells. And, you know, I didn't even do much with kettlebells because I didn't know right. a lot about them. Right. And just learning all this stuff, man, it's a lot more, it's a lot more fun to work out now. You yeah. know, it's not just the same, Oh, I'm going to bench today. Oh, I'm going to do curls today. You know, it's, it's just different the technique. It's, it's different, it's, like it's different level, right? So different. And your brain's got to be so focused because, you know, when you're on a bench, it goes up and down. You know, when you're working with a club bell, it can go this way, that way, this way, that way. It can go it's all just so sorts versatile, of ways. right? All yeah. the things that we're doing. Yep. Very versatile. And it goes so well with sporting events, you know, or not sporting events, but sports. In sports. General. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. We were joking like, uh, like the video games was it tail of the tape, you know, tail of the tape. You're, you're, you're Robert Miller, you know, tag fit, but you know, like, you know, club bell is your favorite tool. Basketball, you know, like that. Favorite right? sport. Favorite sport. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> what else is on the Favorite table? Favorite activities, uh, stunt work, getting lit on fire. Yeah, because uh, you're, you're, that's, that's why it's Fire Burn Bob, right? Your yeah. Instagram. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I moved to LA to do stunts. Yeah, but I found, uh, found this instead. So 
it's the journey, right? Yeah. <clears throat> you brought some stunt guys in, into the, into the fold to, mm-hmm. to train and to, yeah, I wish I had more themselves. of a connection with those guys. Cause I think like the stunt community in general needs to uh, really focus on doing that recovery, doing the flows mm-hmm. because you know, you're taking a hit time and time again, you know, take after take after take, whether you believe it or not, whether it's just for a film and it's just acting, your brain and your body doesn't know that. So your brain and your body are literally going through that action and it's storing that energy into your cells. And every time you hit the ground or every time you snap your head from taking a fake punch, your brain is going through that and it's storing that energy in your cells and it needs to be released. That's why I think a lot of stunt guys are crippled, not literally crippled, but they have very little mobility. They usually get sick. A lot of them pass away at a younger age Mm -hmm. than they should be from cancers. Um, A lot of them, you know, have other health issues. And I think it's coming from all of that stored energy in their bodies that is never being released in their cells. And it's being built up and it's and it's all adding up and, and then it rears its ugly head as a disease. So I'd love to be able to reach out to more stunt people and show them this kind of stuff, you know, so that they can do their work longer and survive better. And when they finally stop doing stunt work, they can still get around and have a good quality of life. Because I see a lot of the older guys, man, they can barely walk. Like you can barely walk. You're, you're, you're 50, you're 60 years old. You shouldn't be like that. Like some of the guys you've brought in. Yeah. Super like they're beat up. Super tough guys. Don't yeah, get me wrong. Tough yeah. guys, but. And, and that's also the other end of that sword. You know, it's like, you're a tough guy. And what am I going to do this little mobility right, crap right, for, right, right. you know, ah, you know, it's like my jujitsu black belt, you know, world-class guys and then they can't walk. Right. Yeah. There's no point for that. You know, like it doesn't have to be like that. Right. It doesn't have to be like that. It's not, it's not how it's supposed to be. Right? Guys getting crazy surgeries. Yeah. Just and that's, that's being miserable. They, you know, they take pain pills mm-hmm. and yeah, I, mean, yep. I, used to, I used to take ibuprofen every single day. Right. Right. Was, yeah. For like years. Like, you know, <laughs> this, you More know than a decade, almost every single day. And that's just ibuprofen. Just a deal. You know? yeah, just just a deal. deal. And that's like deteriorating your stomach acids, yeah, it's sure. deteriorating your, your gut floral, all that kind of stuff. And why do you want to have to keep taking something every day? You right. know? That's that's the problem with our society is that we've just put so much faith into these doctors and they still call it a practice. You know, they're still experimenting on people. Oh, maybe this will work. Oh, maybe this will work. You know, yeah. how about we just, you know, move a little bit more. Right, right. Breathe a little bit better. You know, For relax sure. a little bit more and understand that our brains need to process the stress of, the, of our everyday life. Yeah. Yeah, movement, man. Movement is it's my way too. I mean, my background was obviously jujitsu. Um, but it's like that movement is that is what rewires everything mm-hmm. for you. Yeah. You know? Focusing really, really hard on your movement. Right. That's why like I love jujitsu, but not everybody can do jujitsu. Mm-hmm. But with tack fit, everybody can do it. Mm-hmm. So that's why I really love it and I really appreciate it. Like, you know, my wife, like whoever I can tell my mom to do it, you know, right. And they can all ben- get the same benefits that they get from jujitsu and martial arts. Mm-hmm. Just by moving a little bit, just by moving, you know, through quality movement, right. And doing all the, the principles that we, that we teach. Right. Right. All the right things. Yeah. Yeah, man. Where would you like to see Tack for go? Well, I want to start doing those uh, brick and mortars, man. We need more schools. Yeah. I'd like to see it start to get franchised out and opened up. And yeah. um, I'd love to see just tack fit schools everywhere. Yeah. You know, let's yeah, let's man. get people back to being healthy. Yeah. You know, let's stop worrying about what we look like and let's start worrying about how we feel. You know, Amen, man. That's the <laughs> you said it. You said it right. Like, yeah. that's, that's stop worrying about what you look like. Worry about what how you feel every day. Yeah. She'll wake up easy every day, pain free every day. Yeah. You know. Well, man, thank you. Thank you for, you know, being being my coach for so many years and being there for me. Um, just all with, uh, helping our community every single day. 
uh, with the system and teaching and just being a great guy, you know, I really appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. I do. love what I do. I, I love the opportunity that I have here. I'm glad that we met each other. You know, you're an inspiration and a mentor to me. Absolutely. And, you know, we share that same road back and forth. You know, there's things that, you know, there's things that I know. And sometimes we get a little heated and boiled up, but you know, with any good friendship, that's, that's what it is, you know, and, and we let bygones be bygones and we move on and we get through it. So. That's it. I want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank, thank you for you, everything you've done, and I appreciate it, man, tremendously. Yeah, Love it's you. been a great ride. Love you, man. Love you, too.